Good morning, guys. Well, for me it's morning. Uh, so, good morning. Okay, let's uh, go talk further about shaders. So, uh, in the last video, uh, we just did a quick introduction to shaders, and uh, in this video, we're going a bit uh, farther. So, first of all, why is it um, useful to run programs on the GPU? So, why is so shaders are said to be so much performant? Well, uh, that's because of the way shaders work. So, um, a fragment shader and a, a vertex shader works in parallel. They work in parallel with uh, the data that they receive from the um, from the application. So, in this case, from Max. So, the vertex shader works uh, with uh, all the vertices of our shape that we that we send it uh, automatically to the vertex shader in parallel. So it works in parallel with all the vertices at one time. And uh, the same thing uh, does the fragment shader. But uh, of course the fragment shader has to work with a lot more data because we have uh, much many more uh, pixels than, uh, than vertices here in our screen. Yeah. So these are the pixel that the pixels that compose here the the color of my shape. Uh, each of those is worked uh, by the fragment shader in parallel um, on the GPU. So why is so useful to run this kind of stuff on the GPU? That's because the GPU has a lot of cores. So while the CPU usually has four eight cores, the GPU has a lot of them, especially in the newest graphic cards. They can have uh, until thousands of uh, of different of cores, and uh, natu nat naturally those cores are lower than the cores on the CPU, but they are actually a lot. So yeah, the advantage is that uh, they can work on a lot of parallel um, calculations at the same time, which is perfect for the purpose of uh, shaders. And furthermore. A lot of these operations like vectors, uh, multiplication, matrix multiplication, um, yeah, working with vectors, um, variables, um, and uh, these kind of things, it's uh, usually implemented on the hardware or the GPU. So this kind of math is uh, implemented in the hardware of the GPU. So yeah, this is why it's useful to run shaders. Uh, in the last video, I said that I could do the same thing with the JIT gen that uh, actually runs on the CPU. So it works uh, kind of in the same way. It works in parallel with the vertices um, of our shape, like the uh, like a vertex shader, but uh, it runs on the GPU. So it's more performant to run a shader on the GPU in most cases. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to say is that uh, the data that we that we output from the vertex shader is going to be interpolated uh, uh, to the fragment shader. So, for example, uh, the the front color here that I'm that I'm deciding uh, to be the vertex uh, the texture coordinates. No, what is it? Yeah, the the noise. The noise uh, here um, amplitude. I decided to be the um, the color of my shape that in the fragment shader gets multiplied by the um, by the color variable here, which is uh, actually it's actually the texture coordinates. So yeah, so this this color this frag this front color here this. Uh, these variables that begin with uh, GL and uh, an underscore, those are uh, built-in uniforms that are the GLSL automatically provides us. So um, the GL front color and the GL position are two variables that get automatically passed to the to the fragment shader. 
So the GL position is uh, actually passed to the fixed function stages that uh, under uh, that go between the vertex shader and the fragment shader. Where the GL front color is assessed in the fragment shader with uh, the GL color variable. So this variable here that I'm writing here is the same that I get that I get here with a GL color built-in uniform. So this variable, uh, this is a color that uh, I decide uh, per vertex, while this is a color that is is it's being interpolated for all the fragments, so the pixels that go from one, one vertex to the other. So between the vertex shader and the fragment shader, we get interpolation of the data that we sent. Also, this uh, varying text code that I'm defining here is going to be interpolated uh, uh, when it goes to the to the fragment shader. So everything that gets passed uh, from the vertex to the fragment shader gets interpolated. Uh, to pass uh, a variable from the vertex to the fragment shader, we have to use this varying keyword. So everything that I define here with uh, outside of the main function with a varying uh, keyword and uh, I define the same variable here in the fragment shader yeah this variable is going to be passed from the vertex to the fragment shader so I um, I define it here I, I, just, I give it a value here in my main function in the vertex shader and then I, and then I pass it uh, to the vertex shader for use it um, here to, to get the color of this uh, to transform the texture coordinates into a color well uh, this is uh, something that I'll explain later so yeah this variable also gets interpolated but uh, you have to notice that we are going to interpolate uh, this, uh, these values from the vertex to the fragment only if our the object uh, to which we are applying the shader has the smooth shading attribute enabled the smooth shading actually it's really this this uh, interpolation that get um, that gets performed between the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So it goes uh, for the fixed function pipeline as it goes for our custom shaders. So yeah, uh, this was just a small video uh, just to introduce you to some more concepts. I don't have that much time now, but uh, I hope that was useful and uh, gave you a bit more um, insight about uh, shaders. So see you in the next video that I think is coming soon and uh, ciao, have a nice day.